Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again, TGIF. Thank God it's Friday. You made it through another week. And uh, we had a lot going on uh, the last couple of days. Had to go upstate, cut the lawn, and, and the poor man's flea market was uh, was going on, you know, walking around. And also we had a, a, a smoke alert from Canada again. So I really, I wasn't supposed to walk, but I took the chance. You know, I just walked slow. I didn't do any heavy breathing. <laughs> A lot of help that does, right? So, uh, but when I was on my walk, I found a couple things. And, and let me show you what I was talking about. First of all, this, uh, you could see here, somebody must have threw out a stereo system. And uh, you could see the new one is right next to it. So I'm sure one of these components worked. So that's why I didn't take the cord. As you could see, I left the cord intact. But next to it, they had a, what do they call these? Foosball? Foosball table? <laughs> I never, I played it as a kid, you know, it wasn't, you know, huge around here. We used to play knock hockey, but uh, this one, it was a tabletop version. I kept looking, I said, man, this thing is, is, is nice, it's quality, but the men were really well made, like a phenolic. So I said, you know, I got to find somebody that can use this. So I grabbed it. So uh, I got to find somebody that can use it because I hate to see that, you know, some kids can use it and have a good time with it. And uh, we got a few things to get to today. We got a bunch of things uh, to catch up on. So let's get started right away. Okay, next up for Show and Tell Friday. Um, last episode, we did this little box, this little timer box. A lot of you seem to enjoy it, and I'm glad you did because I had a blast making it. But when I was looking on the internet for different things, look what I found on eBay. Can you see this? Now, this is an early home built timer so somebody back in the day decided to take and put a clock a uh, a sessions you could see that sessions time movement clock in here and you can tell it's homemade for the simple couple of reasons first of all this outlet here when you see those horizontal slots that's meant for multiple different style amperage ratings because the straight up and down slots is good for 15 amps when you have one cutting to the side that's 20 amps and they so this outlet would be actually not not too good because you could put a 20 amp or some a high uh demanding plug in there but you can also see here some of the telltales this case looks like it was made nicely done by a, some guy uh, you know a sheet metal worker or something obviously did this and you could see countersunk or but here's another telltale that you could tell you see the x's Somebody did that. They marked it with a pencil so that when they put this back together, they knew which way it goes. And I know that because I do that all the time. Here they had a little insert there to protect. But that's pretty interesting. I don't know if it works, but this is where that other test box comes in handy. Now, that one here, if there's something wrong, the light will go on. And so let's plug it in and see if it works. All right, we plugged it in. You can see here. Now we're going to flip the switch. That's the on-off switch here. And notice the, the second hand on the electric movement. First of all, these electric clocks, they, they were bulletproof. They lasted a long time, but look at that. That works. Now, uh, I have it set for noon. You see the alarm here? You set the alarm here. And I have it set for a, uh, a noon. But what we're going to do is we're going to plug a bulb in here and see if that will will trip. Now, we have a test bulb in here, but um, to see how if it would work is you would set the time to, let's say, for example, you turn this here, That's and it only goes one way when you're setting the time. But we would set the time to, let's say, uh, 3 o'clock here, okay? And then we would advance here. You have to pull this out to advance it until it gets to 3 o'clock. Now, normally, that should turn it on when we hit 3. But you see, I don't feel any clicking going on. Now, here is a manual turn on. You see, you turn that. So it obviously needs some work, but very interesting. Somebody made this much similar to me making mine, but this one here is a uh, it's a metal case. You got to be careful with these metal cases, especially you don't have a ground on here, you know. But I just thought this was interesting, especially with the old time. These clocks, like I said, they lasted a, a long time. What do you think of that? Pretty cool. Okay, right? next up, uh, I have a couple of these. I bought these. These are new old stock. You see this mark time timing device look at this old timey box you know when things used to come in boxes here it was 
Avon, Connecticut. It was uh, manufactured by the MH Roads Incorporated. And you could see here, uh, 60 minutes rated for 13 amps. Remember I told you, and this is a mechanical timer. Mechanical timers are always a little bit a higher rate as far as amperage than the electronic ones, but you can see it's UL approved. Let's open it up, see what it looks like. Uh, again, this is new old stock. Look at this here. Okay, and this is again a, set, a time setter. Here's a one year limited warranty. I wonder if that's still in effect. Probably not. The time is probably uh, lapsed. But look at this here, how this is made. And what this is, it's basically a timer. Now, a lot of these timers, you have to See, it says turn past 10. So you have to go past, if you wanted a five minutes, you'd have to go to 10 and then bring it back to five like that. And uh, you could see here, you could hear it. It's a mechanical timer. And uh, here's a plug. This is non-polarized, right? Non-polarized. So you'd have to get a uh, uh, something that would work on that, but pretty interesting, right? And there's your plug here. And uh, the funny thing is, <laughs> This plug is polarized, right? But the, the outlet isn't. But it seems like maybe it is. Yeah, it is, I guess. You know, the polarization is on the opposite side. Usually it's on the left, but here we go. So this will fit. It doesn't look like it's polarized, but it is. Um, interesting, right? UL. And you see when this goes back to zero, it will... You hear that? It'll shut off. Pretty cool. Now I know a lot of you will wanna see this work. So here we go, we have that plugged in the test bulb. We're gonna bring this back down here. Okay, you can see we brought it back down. Now I'm just gonna turn this back until it clicks. Listen for the click. There we go. So that, that does okay, work. Okay, next up, I just wanted to, I showed this before, I just wanted to show it again real quick because if you don't have one of these, it's really a good investment. They, they're cheap now. They used to be quite expensive. And what this is, it's a outlet checker, okay? And what this will do, this will check to make sure that your your uh, uh, outlet is correctly wired. And a lot, if you get a house, if you didn't wire it yourself, you don't know for sure. And it's always a good idea to test certain things. Now, whenever I make a box like this, you have to test it to make sure you have it uh, right, You know that you have a proper ground and that the wires aren't reversed. So... What would happen is, you see here, there's different LEDs here. They will light up if, if things are wrong. Now, if it's correct, there's uh, the LEDs on the bottom here. If it's correct, the two on the right will light up and the one will not r r light up on the left here. So they have, like I said, different ones they sell on Amazon. Klein makes a real good one. Most of your electricians will carry this. Um, let me show you what happens. So you plug this in like this here, plug it into the outlet. Now... When I turn this timer on, these two lights on the right should light up. Okay, let me turn the uh, timer on. Okay, there you go. You see those are lit up? That means that it's correct. Now, if it wasn't correct, I'd have to go in here, reverse some wires, or do whatever I have to do. But it's always a good idea. Pick one of these up. Check if you have a sketchy outlet, you're not sure. Put it in, you could you might have a ground that's not grounded. It might be grounded in box, might not be grounded at the panel. A really worth the uh, investment. I'll put a link in the description where you can get one. Okay, next up, I really didn't plan to do this today, but what happened was, you know, I, I'm a, as we've been talking, a big fan of the LED light bulbs here. And this one here I've had in my upstairs kitchen for maybe uh, two or three years, maybe, maybe or whatever. And that's on eight hours a day minimum. And, uh, and it just started to blink today. And when I went, I, heard, I saw it from the living room. I went in, it was blinking. So I, I thought maybe it was loose. I went to tighten it up. It was tight in the fixture. I have an old timey fixture, uh, you know, this one here. So uh, it was tight in the fixture, but then I felt it. It was super, super hot. So I said, uh oh, this one's ready to fail. Now, uh, a nine, this is uses nine watts, as you could see here. Um, this is a nine watt bulb. There we go. Can you see that there? Anyway, this is meant to use nine Watts. It is a, uh, equivalent of a 60 watt bulb incandescent. And these are great. They get them at the, uh, deals and they're, uh, a, well, now they're a dollar 25, but, uh, very, very good bulbs. I use them all over the house. They even have up to a hundred watts, same price. These are great for your reflector lights or whatever. And 
did get a little bit warm, but there's a heat sink in here. But what I wanted to do is because it was getting so hot, I wanted to see if maybe, because sometimes when these things start to fail, uh, certain things, I want to see what it's drawing. So let's put it into the kilowatt and see what this, if it's drawing anymore. Okay, there we go. You can see that's my line voltage. Now I'm putting this in here. Okay, you can see it's lit up and I'm looking at the wattage. Okay, now you can see here it's using six watts. Now it's supposed to be using nine watts. So that could mean that a couple of the LED, the Cree uh, LED bulbs that are in there burnt out. But it's, like I said, it's still lit up here. It's hard to tell if there's any, you know, you can't tell from the naked eye. Here's seven. Maybe it has to warm up. I don't know. But I wanted to cut this open because I want to see exactly what's going on in there. So why don't you, let's cut it open, see what's in here. This is a plastic lens, this A19 bulb. They're usually glued on or something here. Let's see what we can do to get this. Okay, I scored around it here with a utility knife, kept going around and around until eventually... It popped off. You can see this is just a plastic housing, a diffuser that is glued on. And here are the array of Cree style bulbs. Let me see if I can get this to focus. Here we go. Can you see that? No. Here we go. There it is. There's what you see on the inside. There's, I don't know how many are there. Let me okay. count. There are 16 Cree or those type of LED bulbs that are in there. Now they're not supposed to generate, this is a heat sink. This is made of aluminum. That's, that's supposed to, you know, uh, absorb the heat. So, and, and unlike the early models, this here is, you can use this here. It says suitable for totally enclosed. You never used to be able to do that. And it also says suitable for damp locations. Unlike the older ones. So now that we get the cap off, let's plug it in and see if we can see if anything is uh, different. Now they're all lit up here, you can see. So I'm wondering, and it's again, seven watts it's drawing. I'm wondering why this thing was flickering and getting so hot. So I'm gonna leave this on here for a while and see if anything changes as far as the heat goes or if any of these start to flicker. I'll be back. Okay, I'm playing and experimenting with this. I just wanna see if you find this as interesting as I do. You see the diffuser, it uh, it does just what that does. It diffuses the light. It makes it not so harsh to look at. But notice that, look at the back, that air filter on that fan. When I take the diffuser off, notice how much extra light, it, and now the extra light is, is more focused towards that way. When you put the diffuser on, it's more around the, uh, in, in the area. But again, look at the difference. You know, the extra. So this would be good if you were putting this in a in a lamp that was like a, for example, if you had it in one of your uh, reflector lights that you wanted to uh, brighten up an area and you weren't looking at the light, this is actually not not so great for us, you know, the diffuser. So uh, pretty interesting, huh? That's with and without. Big difference. Okay, this has been on for a while. You can see it's 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 getting up to it's up to eight watts. Okay, now I don't know if that's the you can see eight watts there. Now uh, it is very warm you know it's warm to the touch much hotter than you would be comfortable leaving your fingers on there for but again they do get warm that is a heat sink it's made to dissipate the heat this type of led the cree style the square style tend to uh, get hotter than the old-fashioned leds which are stay totally cool to the touch i got light bulbs that'll stay ice cold and that's why they don't use leds in a lot of headlights because they don't melt the ice or snow uh, and then they, if they do use them, they have to put an additional heater in there. It kind of takes away from the, what you think. But anyway, pretty interesting, right? Just let me know in the comments if you've ever had an LED fail on you catastrophically, go on fire. Uh, I know with the old uh, compact fluorescence, that sometimes was a problem. They used to, you know, because there was a lot of circuitry in there. And uh, they were never really happy with that design. But have you had any modern LEDs catch fire? Let us know in the comments. Thanks very much. Okay, that. last up, I checked the mail today and look what I got in the mail. Yep, can you see this? This was sent to me by my good buddy, John Fix. You know John Fix, he has a great channel, does great tool restorations. And John's a good friend. And uh, he sent me this piece of original folk art that he made. And you can see how it was made. Now, my question to you is, now this is the way I received it. But I don't know if he sent it this way because of shipping. Is it supposed to be this way or is it supposed to be that way? <laughs> okay.
<laughs> so let me know. Let me know in the comments which way you think it is. Is it up like this or down like it was before? Thanks, John. Okay, so in closing, we covered quite a bit today for a Friday. And uh, let me know, would you have taken the foosball table? <laughs> or would you have left it go? Also, I got to find that. I don't even know what kind of balls they use. You know, the foosball balls. And the other thing is, uh, let me know about John, if you think it should be up or down with the uh, on that art piece. So again, John, thanks for that. And uh, thanks so much for tuning in. Hope you have a great weekend. Take care now. Bye-bye.